Hi, and welcome to the three stories you must tell to attract perfect fit clients. Now, I'm just going to turn my camera off because it's very, very dark here today. So I think I'm just a bit of a silhouette anyway. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad that you're here. And if you have any questions as we go through, please pop them in the chat um, section. If you hover over the screen, you'll be able to see that. Um, and I'll get to those as we go through or at the end of today. But I want to start with a story, obviously and naturally. Um, one of my clients, Joanne, is a real estate agent. And Joanne's biggest challenge is that every real estate agent says the exact same thing. I'm trustworthy, I'm reliable, and I'm honest. And guess what we all think about real estate agents, right? Um, that you can't trust them, you can't rely on them, and um, you know, you usually find out that they haven't been telling you the truth. So by using these three keywords, she's branding herself as one of them. Now this isn't a challenge just for real estate agents though. It's a challenge for us all. The ability to differentiate ourselves from our competitors and not only during that phase of attracting the attention of the right people, you know, when you're trying to get your message out there against everyone else's message um, that someone receives in a given day, but it's also once they actually move into the buying phase and they're comparing you to your competitors. Why are they going to choose you over someone else? What makes you different to any other coach or service professional or healer um, or author, whatever it happens to be that you do? You need them to say, yes, you're the life coach for me or you're the professional for me. So differentiating yourself might seem difficult. And if we talk about um, accountants for, for a minute in the accounting space, they all do audits, they all do compliance and they all do tax returns. So what you do isn't so different, but how you do it is. And one of the ways that we can differentiate ourselves and obviously persuade people to take action with us is through storytelling. So during the next 50 minutes to an hour, I want you to sit back, relax. If you've got a pen and paper handy, that would be great. But what we're gonna look at is the key elements that make up a captivating and persuasive marketing story to inspire action. There's actually one really key thing when we come to crafting those stories. Three powerful business stories that must be part of every marketing campaign to sell more soulfully. If you um, feel like you've um, moved into push energy, then this is great for you. And everyday examples of revenue producing stories for coaching and service-based businesses that you can actually steal if you want to. So a quick snapshot of why, um, you know, why I'm passionate about storytelling. And also, I guess, I've uh, noticed with this um, workshop, there's been a lot of new people signing up to my list. So for those of you who don't know who I am, um, I've worked with real estate agents, national accounting organisations, uh, spiritual healers, marketing experts, so Facebook ad experts, uh, relationship coaches, divorce coaches, um, online entrepreneurs, business coaches, uh, lots of different types of um, businesses all over Australia and the world. I've spoken at um, events nationally on online marketing and storytelling, and I've also done a lot of online speaking as well for other people's programs and courses. Um, I spent 16 years as a journalist, five years running a PR agency, and I'm a published author of a uh, businessman's biography that I'll show you a little bit more about as we go through. And lastly, this month, I had the opportunity to collaborate with one of the biggest names in the entrepreneurial space, the brand um, behind Neil Patel, um, and he owns multiple companies and um, is worth a pretty penny as well with, from, all of his, um, from all of his companies he's doing particularly well. So why is storytelling important to us? Stories are a bit like bubbles in your Coca-Cola or yeast in your pizza dough. They actually breathe life into your marketing. And just like that very corny line um, that I've just fed you, they actually paint visuals in our minds um, that allow us to understand concepts and connect with people even when the picture on the screen is blank as it is here, it's just a blue screen. So I've always had a bit of a storytelling thread through my life, as you just saw from um, that list with journalism, uh, PR, author, and now a marketer. And I think the true power of storytelling, though, for me, um, 
has really emerged in recent years where multiple moments have really highlighted just why we need to be using more of it. So this time last year, um, I was sitting in the hospital's emergency department and I was wondering whether or not my husband would still be with me by the end of the day. So he had extreme high blood pressure in, in a room full of um, 70 and 80 year olds who in his words looked like death warmed up. Um, it was my 42 year old husband that the doctors were most concerned wasn't going to make the end of the day. Now everything that they were trying wasn't working. They had some huge doses that they were uh, giving him to bring his blood pressure down. And for me, I remember looking at the um, faces of the nursing staff and that just really said it all for me. So all my husband you know, could do sitting in the, or lying in the, the, um, in the bed in the corner of the room, he just kept repeating, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. So that moment, I guess for me, shifted my attention from this to-do list of writing newsletters, as you know, I'm pretty regular with my newsletters, getting my blog posts out to attract more leads, um, to this complete and utter focus on just ensuring that my husband lived. And I look back now and I realise just how fortunate I was to have systemised my business and the social media enough that it kept ticking along without me. And in having stories embedded throughout my marketing, um, just to be able to continue that conversation with them as well. I even made a few sales um, and I booked in a strategy call and it all happened without me actually needing to be present. So for me, it's become this form of business insurance for when life happens, my business continues the conversation with the right people without me having to be there and without my business falling over. So what about you? Maybe it's staff going on holidays and you've got this gaping hole in your marketing activities. Or maybe it's you and uh, life happens to you and so everything comes to a halt. And I really do hope that that, that doesn't happen. Um, obviously, but this has become a bit of a mission for me just to ensure that business owners are really creating this insurance within your business. So let's dive in. We're all hardwired to listen to stories. It's the natural way our brains learn and process information. And why is this? It's because people don't remember what you say as much as they remember what they see when you say it. I love this quote from Patricia Fripp. I think... Um, really because stories allow us to paint these really vivid mental pictures in someone's mind. And they're so vivid that often people feel like they're experiencing what you're describing in that moment, like uh, you drinking Coke and, and eating pizza. Um, and in fact, the brain can't tell the difference between reading a story or something and actually experiencing it themselves. So what does that mean for us as business owners? That means that you have the ability to allow someone to experience your service before they even invest. Um, or they can allow, you can allow them to experience the, um, the transformation that your product program or offer can actually um, achieve. So like around the campfire, as you see in the picture, we lean in to listen to stories. Whereas when we look at TV, we tend to uh, channel surf when the ads come on, on. So if you heard a few minutes ago, I didn't tell you a bland list of what I've achieved in my business. I did show you a bit of an outline, um, but I didn't go into my um, general bio. Like I help business owners with storytelling strategy and systems to move your most aligned clients from discovering who you are online, blah, 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 blah. Um, I didn't use that at the beginning of this workshop. Instead, I led with a story. And that story was about the emotional, financial and physical impact having storytelling set up in my business had on me personally when my husband nearly passed away. Now that allows you to understand the value of this without having to push a whole bunch of facts at you. So while you might have uh, not resonated with that particular story, you can probably identify with some element of the story and you've probably painted your own picture of your own scenario uh, that you've lived through um, from your life where your business or work came to a halt because of life. Now here's a few other reasons. There are lots of different reasons why storytelling is just so important, but here's three that you can look at. So processing and retaining important information, it actually makes the information that you share 80% more memorable. Wouldn't it be great if more of your potential clients always fully understood what it was that you do? And this is great if you find that it's really difficult to explain what you do to people. 
Um, I've just had a big yes in the comments there. Thank you for that, Cindy. Um, so yes, if, if you find that really hard, then um, you need to be able to paint um, that picture that they can easily process and they can see the value and what you're trying to say and then have it stay with them long after you've told that story. The next one, reason number two, is allow your, uh, your ideal client to identify with you. This is about humanising your brand. It allows your, um, you to, especially, you know, if you're thinking about uh, your ideal client as a stay-at-home mum, she may not feel that she relates to you if you're a single former corporate woman. So often you don't realise how that story can create a bridge for your potential leads to get to know you, to connect with you, and also to position you as the authority, which is really huge with storytelling. There's also a huge level of, level of trust that needs to happen before they commit. And then the last one is selling in a way that isn't about pushing. So it opens up this two-way conversation with um, your potential clients and people are more likely to open up to you when you're not pushing your message at them and shifting into that hard sell. So you may not feel that you have big stories to share, but having uh, spent 16 years as a journalist, what I realised was that even the most ordinary people can have the most extraordinary stories hiding inside them. And we not, may not be uh, you know, changing the world, but we are selling a service that has some benefit to the lives of our clients. Now, people want to be moved and inspired and they want to believe in something. So make them believe in you through story. Now, there's a bit of a myth that you've got to provide, you know, the one secret or the 10 steps or teach. But when, you know, if you're a PR consultant and you're writing blog posts about how to write a press release, um, how many other PR consultants are writing the exact same blog posts? Even if you have amazing information, people just don't have time for information anymore. You haven't made an emotional connection with them that's relevant to their life right now. And I'll show you examples of that as we go through. But you can do that through your entire marketing and sales uh, pipeline. And um, I've obviously skipped a step there. Um, and this is what it looks like. I call it the client pathway, but it is a marketing and sales pipeline. And it's allowing people to be lured by this storytelling from a simple LinkedIn post or a Facebook post, for example, or a blog post in that aware stage through to the conversation that you have with them um, on Skype or on something like this on Zoom in that first commitment phase where you might be up seeing whether or not you're a good fit to work together. But I um, have them not even conscious um, of what's happening because it's happening so seamlessly. And I have had, um, uh, I had a client tell me that she opened up a newsletter that led to a blog post um, that went to a sales page and she said, how on earth did, I don't know how I got here. And I was ready to buy and, and that's ridiculous because I'm already a client. Um, I'm going back to retrace my steps now um, because they get enveloped in the story. Now your client pathway may not, not look like this. Um, it might simply be meeting someone in person, following up with an email to schedule a coffee chat, and then agreeing to work together. Um, it's all a pipeline and every step has the ability to tell a story to and reinforce why you're the best option. So you can find more about Client Pathways on my blog, um, but for now, this is just a bit of a snapshot um, of that. But the important thing to understand is that storytelling is not a magic pill. It's a piece of the puzzle, as you can see from that pathway map. How many of you actually have a client pathway already? Let me know in the comments section if you've already um, set up your client pathway. Half, <laughs> half set up. Yes, we've had one. And no, not, not started. A couple no, not started. All good, fantastic. So crafting stories that capture hearts. So firstly, it's important to know who your most aligned client is. Now it's this step that will make everything else that follows so much easier. And I remember that I got a tweet from someone who said, it's like you're inside my head. How did you know that's what I was thinking when I sent out a tweet? And that's a reaction that you wanna get. So by focusing in on your ideal client, so you've got one real person who has real hopes, problems, desires and objections, you go much deeper and it makes influencing them much easier. So you write copy that's clear, that's specific 
and that connects with them on a personal level so that they trust you and actually take action. So let's have a little look at crafting those stories. So first of all, what's the actual problem? So when we start with a story, we want to look at what the problem, the conflict situation, or the struggle that this character in your story is actually facing. Now this character is your hero, and in all cases, um, a character that your ideal client can relate to. So it may be you, maybe a hypothetical, um, it may be a client. There's lots of different ways that you can frame this, but starting with that um, place that they're at is really important. So in um, the picture you see there, I wrote this book a couple of years ago for a high profile businessman and we started right in the middle of the drama where um, his most defining moment was realizing that um, the company that he'd spent 20 years building, um, that he was hoping to pass on to his son, he no longer could pass on to him because he'd developed schizophrenia. So um, this started with the major problem is what do you do with a business that you spent all this time building? Um, what's the next path? So that's what, where uh, we started, started the story and it's um, highly emotional, lots of conflict um, and lots of struggle in that first part. Then we move on to the middle of the story, which seems very obvious, right? Um, we look at, um, you know, often a character will experience resistance or have, um, have to figure out the steps to overcome that challenge during this part of the story, which leads to a turning point. And this is a moment where things shift for them. So um, the story that you can see on the screen at the moment, this was um, in my Facebook group. It was also in my newsletter. Um, and I shared it at a workshop and it's basically that I had to, my father-in-law, the man in the picture, um, passed away and I had to fly back to Tasmania for 11 days. Um, and during that time, obviously my business had, you know, or I had to stop working in my business, but my business kept working for me. So the, the challenge that I was overcoming was what do I do with my business? Is it going to stop? Um, the opening conflict is that obviously someone has passed away and I have to leave. The challenge to overcome is then how does my business keep working without me? And I told that story, um, as I said, at a workshop and I had a lady come up to me at the end of it with tears running down her face um, because she hadn't had a holiday in three years. And she said that if she uh, had a holiday, her entire business would fall over. And she realised um, that was um, you know, not the way that she wanted to be doing business. And this was a really a big highlight for her that there is a way, a different way to do it and a better way to do it, where you can systemise things that you can take a holiday and your business won't fall over. And of course, we get to the end of the story. It's all so obvious, isn't it? But what is the resolution of the story or the outcome the character experienced? And we'll add more, um, I'm going to add a bit more to this in a minute, but you need to think about that resolution or the outcome. Where is it that you're leading people? which leads us, leads us to probably the most critical part of persuading someone within a story, which is the key message. So the final piece is the message you want to get across, a lesson you feel needs to be highlighted, or an action step that you'd like someone to take after hearing the story. Now, there's no point telling the story for a story's sake. You need to be able to have a point to your story and have people understand why you're telling the story. What is the meaning or message you want to get across. I want you to think about that. Write it down on your piece of paper. What is the meaning or message you want to get across in your business? You might have multiple um, and you may find that when you tell a story, you have a couple of different messages within that one story and that's okay. That often happens to me too. Your job is to highlight one message you think people most need to hear right now. now if you find that the message in your story shifts over time, that's not uncommon either. Go with it. Um, a meaning or a message may eventually not be important to you and therefore a story may not be, um, you know, a story may have to be retired at some point. You put it back on the virtual storytelling bookshelf. Um, this is all normal um, and, and again, all things that have happened to me as well. So the story of my father-in-law, I've kind of retired that. I don't tell it quite as often as I used to. Um, lastly, of course, when it comes to messages, you may start with the message you want to get across and then start looking for a story that would help highlight that message. So this is often the case with my storytelling where I know what my goal of a piece of content is. I just need to find the perfect story to wrap around it. 
So as you can see from the um, images that we've just been through on each of these steps, this can be applied across social media, your website, email marketing. Um, it can also be speeches um, that you do in person, conversations, all sorts of stuff. It can be used everywhere and it's just a very simple framework. And of course there is um, more complex frameworks that you can use, but what I've found is just sticking to the basics and sticking to that simple structure often reveals the best stories. So that's the strategy of getting really clear on who your ideal client is and then creating this simple strategy or simple system, sorry, that moves them from social media platform or wherever it happens to be that you're attracting people to your website through your email list to nurture them and then of course inviting them to work with you all using storytelling. And as you can see, writing stories doesn't need to be complicated to so keep it simple. Um, as I said, the best stories are often the simplest stories. And the last piece of um, training that I want to offer today in this workshop is using storytelling to inspire action. Now at each stage of your marketing pathway, you need to ask, what do I need to demonstrate to my most aligned clients to get them to say yes? I want you to write that one down as well. What do you need to demonstrate to your most aligned clients to get them to say yes? And whether that's saying yes to clicking a link to learn more, or maybe it's leaving a comment on a post, um, maybe it's opting into your email list or booking a call or buying from you. Um, that leads, and, and of course that then leads us to what are the stories we're going to tell? Now, as a business owner, um, what could you allow someone to feel they're experiencing before they experience it? For example, what's it like to coach with you? Or what's it like to use your product? What's it like to have the outcome that your product or your service provides? Now, there's many story types. In fact, I have um, 21 different stories I get um, my clients to use in their business and marketing that allows them to effortlessly attract perfect fit clients and in um, the online marketing mastermind we actually had a master class on this where um, the ladies come up with their 21 stories and then I have um, a bit of a map or a framework there that shows them which stories work best on which platforms and in which sections of those platforms as well. Um, so it's all laid out and mapped out for you so it's very very easy to one find your stories and two know how to use them. But today I want to share just three stories um, to get people to take action with you. Keeping in mind as you go through these, um, asking yourself what do you need to demonstrate to your, you know, your prospective clients to get them to say yes. Some of these will apply to all areas of your client pathway and others are just going to be specific to one or two steps maybe within the pathway as well. So let's dive in. Number one is sharing your why and your values. Now, what if your ideal client is saying, I don't know if she's my person or I don't know if I can trust her. Donald Miller uh, in his book, Building a Story Brand said, when a customer realizes they have a lot in common with the brand, they fill in all the unknown nuances with trust. Now, one of my optometrist clients um, from New South Wales posted stories like this on her Facebook page about why she does Cambodian vision and um, had what she described as perfect fit clients started walking in the door as if by magic. And it's because they're really aligned to her business's values and what she believes in, um, which is of course sharing really openly on her Facebook page um, through these stories. And this in fact is one um, in a series of stories she shared in the lead up to, during and then after her Cambodia trip. Um, the story of my husband is one of my why stories, as you would have heard. In the opening of this workshop, I shared about Joanne, uh, the real estate agent, about being trustworthy, reliable and honest, like every other real estate agent, um, and how using those keywords, she's branding herself as one of those. So to move her away from that and to highlight her empathy for many of her ideal clients um, who are having to sell the family home, to move their parents into aged care, we dug into some really personal stories which aligned with her values and uncovered why she does what she does and her why statement. And we use that why statement throughout her marketing in various forms and tell the stories uh, we uncovered when we're actually defining the why statement as well. 
So she has a case study video, which we're about to turn into a blog post because I'm all about leverage. Um, of this lady who sold her mother's house to move her into aged care and how caring and empathetic um, Joanne was to their situation during that process. Um, I interviewed her in the top video to share how people refer to her now as a dear friend um, and they keep in contact years after she um, sell, sold their house. Um, and she often um, they often also refer their children and friends um, to her as well. So she's building this social proof by having these stories. And then our next step is actually to find out the why statements um, of her entire team. But the one simple um, statement directs every action that she takes in every day. And as Simon Sinek said, uh, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. We've all heard that by now. Um, your story doesn't have to change the world. It just has to change the life of at least one person to matter. And that's how Joanne has people walking in her door saying, I watched your video and I knew you'd be the right person for me. So what I want you to write down next is what's happened in your life that's changed the way you think about the world and your role in, in it. Think of something that relates to why you do what you do in business now. So have a little think about that one. What's happened in your life that's changed the way you think about the world and your role in it. Often we come up with stories from our past that um, perfectly illustrate what we're trying to communicate to our clients. The next story is the endorsement story. So tell customers and collaborators stories. Now this is particularly important because it's where we can allow people to see how we can help them and the transformation that we can provide based on what we've done for other people. So case studies um, via blog posts can help us really show why someone sought us out in the first place, what the process was like working with us, and what the outcome was. Now a shorter version of this would be a testimonial on your services page that help again provide that social proof for anyone who may be a little bit unsure of whether to click that button to book a time with you or dial that phone number. So the key to make this successful is not to tell your most successful client story, um, which I know we tend to want to opt towards, but to rather tell a story that your ideal client can relate to, one that they can see themselves in the story. And a prime example of that is uh, one of my clients, um, a weight loss surgery um, client, she, a nutritionist, sorry, for weight loss surgery clients. Um, we were launching an ebook on Amazon and then that was going to lead to a membership program. And one of her Facebook posts ended up going viral, had over a million likes on it. Uh, we lost count of comments and the reach on it as well. It was um, quite phenomenal. Her book went to number one within a day and it filled out her membership program. And I used to tell that story quite regularly until I realised that it wasn't, um, people heard that story and then said, I can't do that. So you need to be able to find the stories that people know, I can do that. And, and to be honest, it can happen to anyone. But, um, you know, um, this company uh, had a really small Facebook page, so it can happen to anyone. But you need to be able to ensure that people can actually see themselves in the story. So you can tell other stories um, uh, in any way that you want, but they're super powerful and they're a great way to increase engagement when you can tag them into um, social media posts on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter as well. And it provides that social proof, as I said, that you can get the result. So as you can see on the screen, you can show a before and after of a client, as in uh, what skin correctives are doing here, or go straight to a testimonial or a case study that links to a longer uh, blog post, as you can see in the one where, that I've shared. Now, when I share quote images like this one um, on social media, I always have people reaching out to me or I get engagement on them. It's social proof that what I say I can do isn't just made up. My clients always write these amazing testimonials that show how much I care about them and their business um, because that's one of my key values. It's that I will look at, I'll treat your business as if it was my own. So now typically we would see um, accounting as a rather dry and boring industry. Um, sorry for the accountants on the call. But here are two examples of telling a collaborator's story. So firstly, uh, Zero's Jeremy Sutton is sharing Synectic Group's accounting story um, to highlight the partnership. It's very, very brief, 
But smartly, uh, Synectic has retweeted that to, um, to expand that social proof for themselves. The other is a more emotional story of the association that the firm uh, works with and also taps into their values. So understand that some story types can cross over. Sometimes you can have a why story with a um, endorsement story. But the question I want to ask you on this one is, what is a client story you could share? So this is the second story I want you to find. Uh, don't choose your most successful client story, as I said, but rather a story your ideal client will most relate to. So you've done your why story, now think about a client story. Take a few notes to help you. And then the next one, the next storytelling type is overcome objections. As I said, there's 21 different story types. These three are probably the most powerful that you can be telling. So people are always coming up with stories in their head of why they're not going to invest with you. When they get to your sales page, they already know that they're not going to invest and they've already got objections. So what do you need to demonstrate to overcome those objections? There's three different types of um, objections. We're just gonna focus on one to them and I'm gonna show you some examples. But one of the big ones is their internal belief system. So Jodi, who's been part of um, this year's um, The Online Marketing Mastermind, um, she's a business coach for healthcare professionals. And one of the challenges that she has to overcome is that practice managers don't know what the value of a business coach is. And they believe that they can't use tech, which limits them, of course, doing virtual coaching with her. So that's why I really loved this post that she put up on LinkedIn, where she details what her clients have been able to overcome in her latest group coaching program that she does online. So she's overcoming that objection that they have to possibly working with her and show them that she works with people just like them. She's breaking down a lot of barriers in this one post. Another client on the screen, Abney, she has potential clients who want to work with her to create 10K months, but they don't believe that their potential clients have the money to pay that amount. So she tells a story to overcome that. And I know that posts like this always get Abney a lot of engagement and she also always has a lot of perfect fit clients reaching out to her as well uh, when she posts these stories, whether it is on social media or in her email, um, email marketing system. Nicole is another one from, uh, Nicole who's from Planning With Kids is another of the ladies who is part of the Online Marketing Mastermind this year. And she focuses on two areas. One in the first picture is meal prep. So people think that life is too busy to do meal preparation. She, so she shares these amazing posts that shows how she preps her weekly meals on a Sunday. And it makes um, it feel more achievable when you can do this. And I've got to say that, um, you know, if she, she can do it with five kids, surely I can do it with two kids. Um, the middle one is her planned and present course, which she's sending people directly to from this video, where she tells the story of what she's doing in her own family. Again, she tells how she can do this with five kids, so again, I should be able to do this too. She became, becomes really relatable through these videos. And the last one that you can see is from a bookkeeper who knows that her ideal client's biggest fear to picking up the phone to her is that their books are in a complete mess and they're too embarrassed to share them with her. So she tells a story of someone who is in that exact place and how she's helped them in a gentle way. So, um, you know, there's lots of different things you can do there. So what does your... What belief does your ideal client currently have that you need to overcome or shift? That's the third story that I want you to write down. And what belief does your ideal client currently have that you need to overcome or shift? So as you can see, you don't need to be Shakespeare to uh, influence, inspire and persuade people to take action with you through your story. Sometimes the most powerful stories are the simpler stories, as you saw from a lot of those examples and the ones that prompt people to pick up the phone or email you or hit that um, buy button um, because it hits them right where it matters in the heart and it creates that emotional connection so you just need to know how to tell the right story at the right time to attract the right people to you and how do you know where to add your stories well you need to ask where are people dropping off in your marketing pipeline is number one and that was that big picture that I showed earlier. And where do you need to provide 
uh, persuasion or belief. So think about um, those two questions for a minute. Where is it for you? Where do you know that you're losing people right now? What um, often happens after these workshops is that you have all these amazing uh, notes that you know you want to implement and these stories that you've got. And right now you're feeling inspired and you're ready to take action. But what I've found is if you don't have good examples around you to, uh, sorry, good people around you to reach out to when you get stuck and gently push you back, put you back uh, towards your goals and ensure you stay accountable to what you originally set out to do, then nothing ever changes. And another year uh, passes by and we wish we'd implemented by now, but we keep holding ourselves back. We hold our stories back and we don't share them with the world. And each year to combat this, I actually personally join a mastermind to gain support and become surrounded by people who have my back. And in fact, I've actually just signed up um, to my mastermind for next year this week. I've just um, signed up to a new one. So when we're in business, it can be pretty lonely and we can shift into procrastination because we get scared about, you know, whether the story we have to share is good enough. Um, well, what will people think of me if I share this? We overanalyze and um, in turn hold ourselves back from truly putting our best work out there. So what I want to end today with is all about lifting the fog and finding clarity, uh, giving you clear strategies that are going to make a big impact on your business and keeping you accountable through support of women who are at the exact same level of business that you are. So your stories do get out there because I know you all have amazing stories to share and your aligned clients need to hear them. So as you can see on the screen, it's called the Online Marketing Mastermind, or Tom, as all the uh, ladies in my masterminds have dubbed it. But one of the things I've often not liked about um, group programs is that you end up becoming just another number in a program and you pretty much get lost. Um, so with only two or three other women in the group with you, there will always be time for you. And through the mastermind, you gain accountability to keep you on track as well. So here are three examples of women from the masterminds I've run who are told powerful stories and use the system we've spoken about today to create change in their business. So this is the inspiring Kirsty from A Fresh Legacy, who was able to see her email list exceed her goal. Um, her first Facebook ad generated immediate sales, which was a huge shock to her. Um, she gained clarity and purpose with her marketing rather than the ad hoc approach she had before, which of course resulted in consistent, predictable sales. And previously she confessed that things were um, pretty sporadic when it came to sales, but now she has this consistency built up. Then there's a gorgeous Lisa, uh, who is a memoir author and mentor. And what Lisa did is she ended up doubling her email list when she set up her um, client pathway system. She, her Facebook group tripled as well, thanks to the marketing 90-day um, marketing plan that we were able to put together for her and more inquiries for, from her mentoring program um, than she'd ever had. So um, she was quite blown away by that, just by how regular that the um, inquiries were coming in for her programs. And then we have Jodie, um, who's a business coach specialising in working with healthcare professionals. Now she saw more clearly what the bigger picture was for her business, but also how to then go about implementing the details. So what often happens is we have a really clear strength in one area and not the other. And most people are like that. So being able to be really clear on both um, means that you're able to move your business forward much faster when you can be doing both. Otherwise what happens is we have really great um, big vision of what we want to achieve but we never actually do the work to um, bring it to life. Or we get so bogged down in the detail of what we're doing day to day that we never sit back and look at the bigger picture of where we're going. Um, she launched her first online masterclass series. And um, I have to say, when you do a, um, a workshop training or a, a masterclass or any webinars online, generally you'll get somewhere between 10 and 30% show up rate. 30% is high. Um, she exceeded her goal of live participants and uh, ended up with 52% and 48% live attendance rate, which is just um, insane, very, very high numbers. And she tapped into and mastered some new tech tools as well to support her marketing activities, including doing 
video and Facebook ads, which um, of course created more ease then when it comes to doing her marketing. So let me ask you a question. If you follow what I've shown you here today, um, you build a strong online marketing system with storytelling that provides that instant result, as well as building a legacy business that's going to continue to reward you and your family long into the future. Do you think you could be successful like the women that I've just shared with you today? Do you feel like you're running a business without a holistic strategy right now, that you're not really clear on the stories that you need to share, or that maybe you're struggling to find the right words in your copy, or maybe you don't know how to set up the systems um, from a technical perspective? They're often the challenges that a lot of the women who become part of the mastermind have. Um, the tech and the copywriting um, or the strategy are the three uh, key big areas. So it's, if it's okay with you, I'd love to share a little bit more about Tom um, uh, and how it can help you implement this in your business. So it's not just about building your audience and growing your email list and increasing sales, although results are obviously a big part of it. But um, as uh, my mastermind ladies have always expressed so beautifully, is uh, for them it's about shutting the lid on the laptop at 3 p.m. school pickup and not opening it again until the morning or spending an entire day um, on Friday indulging in a mindset book or going to the salon. And it's also about contributing to the family finances in a really meaningful way rather than building uh, six-figure businesses that are completely depleted by expenses. And I hear so many um, stories of this more and more um, these days and it, it upsets me and um, is a whole other topic. But I really want you to have a business that's profitable and that you are um, contributing to your, to your family's um, finances, which is why there's a big um, focus on connecting with like-minded women. Um, it's lonely out there uh, if you're a solopreneur and you're having other people's minds on your business. It's just so incredibly powerful. The accountability to keep you on purpose throughout the year, so often we get distracted by sharp, bright, shiny objects. Um, I don't know how you've survived the whole Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and now Christmas coming. Um, that used to be a huge issue for me. And building a business for immediate results while creating a legacy that will repay you and your family long into the future. You'll hear me say that a lot, a lot because that's really one of my cores of doing business. So here's a little bit of the nuts and bolts of what you get inside of the mastermind. There's 12 intimate mastermind experiences. You get support and accountability during those to improve yourself and your online marketing to get bigger results in your business and really being part of a mastermind is where my entire business changed as I said because I had this collective mind zeroing in on what I was doing and often others see what you can't see because you're just so close to your business and we all are. We'll be taking a holistic approach to your business and then zeroing in on those traffic strategies that are best suited to your business and creating your 90 day marketing plan so you can create consistency with your marketing. Um, and we'll be keeping you accountable to that too. And then setting up and reviewing your self or client pathway and your paid offers within your business ecosystem, ensuring that that is all enveloped in storytelling. So by the end of the six months, we'll aim to have your business producing the kind of leads that you've always wanted. And this is really for women who have been in service-based coaching business, um, service-based businesses or coaching businesses, sorry, um, for you know, maybe three to five years and you're ready to step up to that next level. And um, just the mastermind calls themselves are valued at $3,000. But you also get two one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions with me to define your goals and deep dive in your metrics. So you'll get one at the beginning to set your business ecosystem. And then finally at the end of the six months to look at your metrics and uh, set goals for the next six months as well. And that alone is $600 value. Then we get exclusive business mastery classes. I love doing these. They're on different marketing topics to accelerate your business, like Facebook ads, uh, business storytelling, and strategic blogging. Um, last week, we focused on sales conversations and how to do them well. Um, I'll also be inviting in next year some experts to ensure um, what you most need is catered for. So the content is uniquely catered to you and the other group members. This is not a cookie cutter course. So I don't pre-organize who those speakers are going to be because it's based on who you are and what you most need. This isn't just a, 
um, a program that's pre-done um, if, if it is uniquely tailored to you. So that's a $1,500 value for those mastery classes. Now the other thing I've mentioned um, earlier when I talked about um, we set up a client pathway in a day, this is our get it day done. So it's to accompany the, accomplish those uh, long overdue tasks for big change. As I said, one of our big ones this year in Tom was the client pathway um, that you saw earlier. And we set that up in a day, um, hence why it's called get it done day. Um, and so that you can move forward much more quickly. And that um, is a 997 value. You also get access to my client pathway library. This is kind of like Netflix for marketing. So it has every product, program, tutorial I've ever created to keep you moving your marketing forward between calls. And you get ac instant access to this when you join the mastermind. So you could actually be diving into this today. And then the, and that one's valued at $3,000. There is a lot in there. And the last one is access to private software tools like my premium SEO tools, which um, will ensure that when you do the content marketing sections, you're not held back by knowing which blog posts you should be writing. And I'll even audit your site so you can see what you're already ranking for and how you can leverage this further. So if you want to do storytelling in a big way in your marketing, then blogging is a great outlet for it. And that one's valued at $1,000. Now there is a bonus of course for today. If you book a time for us to chat about your place in the mastermind before the end of today, so there's no obligation to join of course, it's just for us to have a chat. If you do decide to join us, um, you'll also receive this extra additional coaching session to use whenever you wish throughout the six months. And that could be, um, you could use that before we even get started in February. Um, so it's great if you want to start moving forward now, or it's great if you get stuck with Facebook ads or there's something techy happening that um, we can't solve through the Facebook group, although most of the times we can. Or you want to deep dive deeper into strategy on something specific, then you've got that one up your sleeve. So are you ready for a year where you feel fully supported and accountable so you can finally feel that great sense of achievement you feel um, that maybe you're lacking right now? I don't know where you're at at the moment, but what's your year been like this year? So this experience runs for six months from February and uh, due to the importance for me to have high touch on your business, so you're not going to be a number in a program, um, each group will only be uh, four people maximum. So the value of the mastermind, um, as you can see, is $10,097. Um, and while many masterminds out there are reaching around the $20,000 mark now, even more in some cases, I think the last mastermind um, prior to the one I've done this week was $12,000. Um, but today I won't charge you $12,000 and I certainly won't charge you $10,097, even though, of course, as you can see, that's what it's actually worth. Today it's only um, $3,000 or six payments of 500, and there's GST for those in Australia as well on top of that. But my goal is to make this achievable if you're a few years into your business and you're ready to up level and uh, leverage your business through storytelling systems and strategy. So to take that first step and join us, you can go to this link. Now it is case sensitive, so it's capital O, a capital M, and there are two M's there as well. Select the button that is on that page and then fill in the form that's there that pops up on the screen. Hit submit and then you can wait for my calendar. That should be another page comes up with my calendar there for you to be able to book a time for us to have a chat. Um, so this is really for you if you want to create a consistent, predictable flow of aligned clients signing up for your discovery calls or strategy calls each and every month. It's for you if you want to use storytelling to sell more softly and really avoid that ick, icky uh, bulldozer marketing. It's very technical terms that I'm using. Um, and it's also for you if you want to develop evergreen systems that give you back more time so you can close the lid on that laptop at three o'clock every day if that's what you really want to do. Um, then I want you to head on over to this link now. Now know that when you book the free session, there is no obligation, of course, to join the mastermind. Um, if it doesn't feel like the right fit for you. So worst case scenario uh, for you is that you end up with a bit of a profit pathway audit of your business from me and some next steps to maybe take if you're not ready to join the mastermind just yet. There's huge value there just for having a 30 minute chat. 
So just a reminder, Tom is 3,000 or six payments of 500 and you can step into a better way to build your soulful brand where you feel supported, nurtured and fully accountable. And of course, don't try and spend another year on your own trying to battle the tech challenges, the mindset issues. We do a lot of mindset work as well or the copywriting misfires if you feel that your copy just isn't there on your website and your social media right now. Now the package, um, this package is uh, knowledge, implementation and a deep level of support as you build this soulful system that repeatedly nurtures, provides value and builds rapport with your most aligned clients. So you can obviously then contribute to the family's finances in a meaningful way um, without having to work late till late every night. If that's what you're doing at the moment and burning the candle at, two, at both ends, then this is a way for you to systemize um, so that you can create more time in your life. So if you want to ensure you're using the right marketing strategies in your business, um, if you want one-on-one -on -one attention from me to refine your strategy and put it into action, while also benefiting from that regular group mastermind experience with women who are just like you, um, whose ideas, collective ideas and support and accountability will really lift you to that next level, then I'd love for you to chat um, and invite you into the online marketing mastermind. Now, some people have missed out on previous intakes, so if you're still undecided, I really encourage you to at least have a chat. Um, the current intake of ladies has just achieved some incredible results this year and uh, really supported each other. And I just find it really humbling in each of the masterminds that I do, just how much um, everyone cares about each other, um, each other and their well-being and their business. Um, or we you know, get to celebrate some amazing moments as well, which always lifts you up. When you get to celebrate someone else's success, it just uh, lifts you up as well. So there's a great bond there now that I know continues with a lot of the masterminds um, that I've done. So if you'd love that in your life and your business right now, then I'd love you to join us. So the link's there on the page. I'm just going to check to see if there are any questions in the chat box. Um, or if there's anything that you need to know. I'm really conscious of time that I have gone 50 minutes, as I said I would. Um, but it doesn't look like there's any, any questions there. No? All good. Fantastic. Well, if you do happen to have questions about um, storytelling, about the three different stories we um, talked about today, or about the mastermind itself, if you want to ask any questions before you book in a session, please uh, reach out to me via email or Facebook Messenger is fine as well. And I'm happy to answer those questions. But thank you so much for um, joining me today and for, for um, taking those notes and hopefully you'll take, away, uh, take those away and actually implement them into your business. But again, thank you so much for joining me and good luck with your storytelling. Thanks.